Howdy folks, uh, started working on my holster and uh, decided I would let you guys in while I do these last second tweaks to the design. Um, reason I'm kind of poking up here is I have got my first sample merchandise in. So this is the Exploded Diagram t-shirt and I have it, I ordered it for myself in green which I like and then it's also here in black. It looks really good. The printout came out really nice. This actually kind of almost looks like metal. The shading is really good. So I'm, I'm excited to be able to offer those. I'll have them as pads and as shirts. I'm still waiting on the pads to come in. For now, that'll actually act as my pad here. Uh, next thing maybe to talk about, I'll actually switch back to camera, sorry, is I have a day early received my prototype holster from Shapeways. So these prototypes I make on the Form Labs Fuse 1, uh, but this is identical to what you as an end customer would be receiving. And I always do this as a final tweak because there's always a little bit of tiny changes I have to make, even though these are the same material and the same process. Uh, they also they still kind of require uh, just different tweaks due to the actual machines that make them. So take a look at the holster here. I of course ordered it in black. That's what I would normally wear. It's available in different colors, and I've already basically been playing with this and. I've cycled the holster a hundred times. I've cycled the ratchet driver a hundred times. Um, the 711L holder though, haven't cycled a hundred times. It's a little too tight on this guy. You can get it out. Um, and that's one of the tweaks we're going to be doing is adjusting the fitment of that. Just to show as an example where this was too loose. This is my older garage number five. Uh, let's see if I can find my prototype from yesterday. This is my arc prototype and that has a really nice snap and pull. And this should be the exact same geometry as from Shapeways, but Shapeways it's a little bit of a tighter fit overall. And I also realized that it also depends on how you dock the 711L because there is a little tiny retaining uh, clip on 711L, and depending on how that's oriented, you can have issues with that uh, locking into place. Uh, where basically it's tighter if it's turned the wrong way. So we're gonna do a tweak for that. The holder for the Volti bit works really well. Uh, to get the Volti bit out, you do still basically Use your bit driver to kind of get in there, grab that, pull up, and then it's able to dock in there by hand, pretty much. Although the tip of the Volti bit is sharp, so you can either push that down with a key ring or push down on the tip. These two side bit holders are deliberately a little bit tighter than some of the others because they're free hanging and I don't want you to lose those. So if you ever need to dislodge those, uh, you can basically use your bit driver to push down on those. But otherwise, you can see here, I can push it in by hand even if that, even with that one being a little bit sharper. The ratchet driver, like I said, I cycled a hundred times. Um, you can see here where it gets a little bit of sheen, just where it rubs opening and closing. And then hopefully the camera will be able to pick it up. My lighting's a little harsh here. But this is where the detent is, and these parts are dyed, so as they, the detent kind of wears, it turns white. Uh, but in either case, what you're actually doing is kind of smoothing out that detent such that this ends up with a nice snap. When you first get your holster, this is going to be very tight, and I'll have to cover that when I do the actual holster. I don't want to make this any looser. Like right now, like when you first get it, it's going to feel like it's absolutely impossible to remove. And... You can either use the pliers to pull it out or you can push it out from the bottom using a bit and basically, or the other option is to actually grab 
and run this backwards. And that will wear in the detent a little bit such that you get a really nice perfect snap in the end that you can dislodge and clip in. Last couple tweaks we're also going to do is related to the bit holders on the back. The bit holders right here are working pretty well as far as you can get the bottom one out by finger, but these top ones are really tight because they're all kind of bunching up against each other, all applying pressure further down the line. I have tolerance for these, and I think what we're going to end up doing is just loosening up the detent a hair and maybe loosening up the actual slots just by the absolute smallest, like half a millimeter or so, just a really tiny amount. Um, I have had com customers complaining that the, the, the bit holders are too tight on my existing P4 holster. And the only difference here is, is these little slots that are cut on each side such that the kind of detent on here is a little bit uh, more snappy, I guess I would say. You can get any of these bits out just by what, doing what I'm doing, which is to push it out with another bit or the end of the ratchet driver. Uh, we'll show in CAD what that internal features look like. There's no more sense in showing that on camera. Uh, the other things we want to do that I got on my list is for especially the armored version. There's enough room here because it's a little more squared off. We can get one more bit into the armored version. And then for the metal clip or what I call I'm calling the third party clip version. Uh, almost every week I get an email going, can you fit a few more bits on the back of that? So I think we'll squeeze one more near the bottom, one more right here and maybe two more. See if we can fit those onto there. Um, we're gonna look at a couple of different clips that go on to the back of here and see if we're still gonna be able to clear the belt. Um, the other option is to make this thicker. I don't like that option because it means you have to push these screw heads in and the whole thing has to become thicker and that's not really, to me, a very good option. All right, so I'm going to switch over to Solid Edge. Oh, and then the last one that we're going to take a look at is still like every single day that I've had this on pre-order, somebody's asked, can I please get the pocket clip to work with the armor version? As soon as I started really doing designing the armor version. Um, I've shown that a little bit in 3D, why that may not work, but I think if we do a little bit of compromises, I might be able to have a variant where it works with a pocket clip or just update the armored version to work with a pocket clip. It just won't be n quite as slick as we have here now. Um, and then just FYI, I'm planning on releasing these this weekend. I have not generated all my renderings yet. I've got some of them, but I typically don't like to do those until I have the final design, of course. Uh, this is everything overlapping on top of each other, including a free P4 hidden inside there. And the ratchet driver and the bit extender. So the only change we're going to do, so I'm going to open my master file for the holster. The only change related to the ratchet driver, I think, is that maybe decrease the size of the detent by the smallest amount. It may not even end up mattering uh, to the way the parts produce, simply because, um, like at least on the Fuse 1, the layer lines are 0.1 millimeter, so... If my change is less than 0.1 millimeter, it's going to just kind of tilt to either one side or the other. On here, I have a little small detent. This is supposed to be kind of an anti-vibration or rattling feature that I put in the bits. In the case of the ratchet driver, it is not needed, I've determined. Um, and talking about rattling, the holster here without the ratchet driver. I'm shaking this right next to the microphone. Has virtually no rattle at all. And the only rattle you would get is, and this is the ratchet driver by itself, so the only rattle you'll get, that's the ratchet driver unfortunately, and it's not it because it's loose inside here. 
it's because of the ratchet driver itself makes a, a, a rattling sound due to the internal parts. All right. We're going to tweak this by the smallest amount. So instead of 1.2, we're going to go 1.1. Oops, I need to switch to a different mode here real quick. Come on. And I know that I'm running this on a 4K screen and you guys are watching on 1080p streams. Can't necessarily see the numbers I'm typing in, but I'll, I'll try to call it out when, I'm, when I am. Not that it really matters. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is pull the actual detent and move it by about five degrees. I think that will help uh, make it so that it springs out a little bit more because right now the detent is stopping right where the bend is. So if I move this away from the bend, maybe 10 degrees like that, or maybe even 15. I think 15 would, would work well. And these are just kind of intuitive tweaks. Uh, Solid Edge is actually works well at being able to do these kind of edits without having to go back and find some history. So let's go and move him also 15 degrees. That way it's a little further away from the bend. I could also move the bend, but I, I kind of like the way the grip right now and how that's working. And I think that'll work. So those are the tweaks for the ratchet. The 711L holder, we'll jump over to next. So this has, again, these little anti kind of vibration bumps. They work pretty well. Uh, they're just a little bit too tall. So we're gonna pull those in again by 0.1 millimeter. And on the 711L, because it's kind of being such a tight fit, we're gonna pull this in a little bit more, in fact. We're gonna make it even with these. It used to be a little more proud. So that's 0.15 millimeter. And the other geometry is this, which is actually a, the geometry that gets subtracted from the holster. So if I turn on the actual holster view, and we're just gonna tweak that to maybe Let's see what five looks like, or six. A little bit less of a bump is the goal here. Um, it could even be just there. So that's gonna be a smoother bump, make it a little easier to take it in and out. And the other thing is we're gonna add a small cutout such that regardless of what the or wire is oriented, it won't get caught when you're docking it basically. So for that, we're just going to add like a one millimeter piece here. It's like I need to do this in a different mode. There we go. And then we'll clean that up when we actually go to do the final kind of output uh, data. And the reason this isn't subtracted by default is I still want to be able to have version, the slim version doesn't have the 711L cutout. All right. Next is all the bits. So I'm gonna turn on and activate all the different bits options we have. So we have a duty option, open clip option, the BDU option, and the version that holds 16 bits on the back side. And we'll turn off the rest. So these are all of them kind of overlaid on top of each other in this kind of cool, like, kind of spine shape. What I think I'm going to do to make these a little bit easier to fit in is I'm going to remove this inner detent. It doesn't actually move. It kind of just kind of wears away. And I don't think it's all that useful. And then we're going to tweak basically the amount of space we have between bits and by just this again maybe 0.1 millimeter or so uh, we need to find that internal face here that's not it might have to fix that one separately let's do this 
Let's just do one at a time. It's fast enough to do this that I can do that one at a time. Didn't get the email. <laughs> what are you working on? Yeah, sorry, George. I didn't send out an email for this one just because it might be just real short and fast and and uh, and kind of as a insider for the people who uh, notice it on YouTube or are or, or, or subscribing. Um, so what I'm working on is the last second tweaks, all the the little bits. And if you join late, I have my Shapeways prototype. I also have my merchandise prototype T-shirt. And uh, there's just little tiny tweaks I'm doing to make sure that the fit on these, these are the bit holders are a little too tight. That's what I'm working on this second. And all the last minute tweaks that I find when I do my absolute final prototype. Now the really nice thing is the uh, mechanism here is absolutely perfect. Nice snap. Uh, when you first get it, it doesn't quite snap. It takes a little bit of, of wearing in. But like I said, I've cycled this a hundred times already. And uh, it works really well. It'll, it's going to work well because also it doesn't release. Like it's not loose from the holster until you get all the way out to halfway out. That also means that it's very, but it's also still very, very easy to dock. All right, we're going to bump these space basically the space in here we're just gonna go 0.1 millimeters and hopefully that's gonna be enough it should be right now you can basically just push the bit through until it kind of wears smooth and there's no issues with that the 0.1 will be safe and we're gonna be adjusting the duty bit holders regardless in a few minutes or not the duty sorry we're gonna go adjusting the open clip. So pull all that in by 0.1 millimeter. And then this is the open clip that we're going to adjust also. And then the 16 bits Oops, I have the ratchet on. I haven't actually printed the 16-bit prototype for myself. I need to. Um, I don't need to do that last one. Just to just to see what it's like to have a kind of tool case carry version of the uh, tool. Oh, did I miss one? I did. No problem. I can just grab that. All right, I think that'll work for for the bits. And you see kind of how fast this goes as far as I can jump through these, make these changes. So I don't think we'll do any changes to the BDU loop. That's been very successful, no complaints. The duty loop, um, maybe we'll add one more bit to the duty loop. Let's take a look at that. So if we turn that on with the arc. We can maybe fit one more. I intentionally didn't kind of have it overhanging too much towards the bottom just because I didn't want to have it where you end up with a bit that ends up catching on stuff. But I think we could safely get one more bit. Also, especially if we change the angle here uh, to maybe match where the bits are. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do that first. And I'm going to hide the bits and just switch over to the D duty loop. One second. Let me find it in my list here. I have to toggle it into design mode in order to do some of the live actions that I want to do on it. So I want all of these faces. In fact, I'm going to remove this little center channel. It doesn't do much. It was more a way of trying to lower the cost by removing material, but it's it's tiny pennies on the dollar. Uh, would one, uh, KT and Jacob, would an inlaid magnet bit retention be viable on the back? Um, not what not by default as far as it wouldn't come that way. That would be a cool idea, and the only way to do that 
with this design would be to I could provide holes or spots for that. The thing with magnets though is that yeah it's going to retain the bit but you want to, and I'll switch over cameras here, if this is sitting on the back uh, basically against your pants, um, a magnet, you still want enough force here that you want to be very deliberate that you're going to pop these out. And I don't know that I'd trust a magnet for that. Uh, yeah, they'd be, they'd be retained in this direction, but you also want this detent feature. And it's kind of, I can't show you how this feels, but you pop that out, you pop that in, it catches on that middle detent. You can see that they're all very well aligned. And that detent feature is, is really uh, kind of needed. Uh, let me catch up my chat. Bunyip Dan, are you still looking at developing a lock or is that a potential future evolution? That's a potential future one. I'm not sure that I'm looking at doing that. Um, if you haven't seen the videos of the armored version, um, I'm gonna demonstrate with my free P4 because I got the barnacle bit holder on there. Um, this guy works pretty well and that I don't know that you're gonna need a lock. Um, first of all, it takes quite a bit of force to pop out the holster on this is the final prototype it's actually again a little tighter fit so i'm going to hold this with my thumb here my finger here so i'm not blocking the tool and i did smack my fingers against that so if i just shake this without smacking my fingers against the table now if i smack my fingers then i can pop it off um, so that's got a stronger retention but also with the armored version you dock that there is nothing that's going to pop that up unless you literally get in there and bump that. And even if you bumped it, it doesn't come out. It's still, it's still retained by the spring clips until you grab this and pull this out. So I'm not sure if the locked version, the locked version is going to be so complicated that I'm not sure that it's going to be worth doing. Um, it might just make the tool harder to use. All right, switching back to CAD, we're gonna change the angle of these closer to the angle of the bit so we can get one more bit in. So that looks like negative 20 degrees. Maybe a hair more. I'm not sure what angle I actually put that in at. That looks like it matches. Let me switch views. Yep, uh, one more degree. There we go. So now the end of the holster matches the bit grips. Now I haven't changed the design of this, this basically this duty loop uh, since um, all the way back to the wave and decided to make these a little funky, no major issue. So they're 0.75. Let me see if I could just straight round that. Nope, but we can delete those and reapply the rounds and just to fix this little glitch that it did. Try that in Inventor, that kind of cleanup. All right, so now we're gonna go switch over to the bits that go with the duty loop. And we'll turn on the arc just so we can see what we're doing. So we're going to take the entire set of bits. I'm actually going to move them to be in line. And then I'm actually going to move them back away. Uh, for the sake of working on this, let's see what's the easiest way to do this. It doesn't have to be perfectly matched. Because we're probably just going to leave a bit uh, hanging out the face of it. So that way I don't have to redo that geometry. So we'll merge him into there. So four millimeters it looks like is going to work. And I'll worry about... Well, actually I can clean that up right now. One second. This little back edge is not needed. doesn't want to be nice let's see let me switch over to working on the actual duty pieces we'll delete this round 
this round just to make the calculations a little nicer. And we can just pull this in such that we don't have that little corner peeking out. Quick and dirty way to do it, and I, I might go back and <clears throat> excuse me, clean it up later. Howdy Knife Train, 311. All right, so we definitely have some room for some more bits. More bits is always good. Everybody wants them. And we're going to just grab all of these. And see, these actually have, let me double check, just because I haven't worked on them in a while. They should have a six millimeter spacing between them. <clears throat> yep, 5.99, close enough. So, can we get out to 12? Can we get two more bits in? Let's see what that looks like. It's calculating. No. So it'll come back six. That's going to be hanging off the bottom of the, of the holster, obviously. So actually adding one more piece, we're going to, yeah, we are actually going to get two more bits out of this. So I grab this geometry, copy that back by six, let it calculate. And it looks like at the very end when I do my merge, I'll have to clean up these corners. Actually, I might be able to round that just to make that final cleanup a little easier. I do that after I kind of merge the parts together. <clears throat> all right, the other option is to move this all back by a hair, but I don't think that's gonna be worth it. I think this will work because I don't want to have this little arm, this detent arm right here become too short. The shorter that becomes, the stiffer it's going to end up. But we got two more bits into the duty loop. Should I look at the DDU loop just in case because like I haven't looked at it in a long time. Now the DDU loop is already built this way. Or the BDU loop, I keep calling call the wrong thing. Just out of curiosity, let's move it by six and see. Yeah, that's gonna be hanging off the bottom. Don't think that's worth it. Knife train 311. I've been using a leather holster until the new holster arrives. Uh I guess the default one. I've been, and it's been digging into my side. I can't wait for the new one. Uh, and I think I've been shown on a couple of things, but for anybody who's who's on here, my holsters all have the belt loop at the top. They do not dig into your side. Uh, they basically hang right off the off of your belt, uh, and so there's nothing there's. Because the current Leatherman holsters poke up like an inch. Even the, even the good leather ones will still do that because they have to have room to put a rivet on the top. So next is the open clips. So the open clips is the kind of most controversy. I call it the open clip or the third party clip. I used to sell it as a separate tech lock, a separate open clip. Uh, well, I guess I should say this is, the, this is the set of bits that also work with the plastic open clip. And that's the only clip that ever fails. And I keep just telling people that, so I'll show it here. So this is the plastic clip. And you can see why I have this ramp, basically, so that you can get a belt in there and back out. And so you need that room. So unless I make the plastic clip, or the open clip, shorter, then... Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to make the open clip shorter in order to make the same set of bits work for the metal clip. The other option is to just simply have separate options like I already kind of do. So this make this the open clip and come up with a new set of bits specifically for the metal clip. And maybe that's what we'll do. Um, first, going to save. So all these changes we've been doing is not going to be a problem. Uh, Sir Loop, have you had any issues with the cutters? Uh... 
No, because I didn't cut anything before I noticed that issue. And I stole the cutters off of, actually it's my free P2, not my free P4. I stole the cutters off my free P2, uh, so I just won't encounter that issue in the future. Um, I may, I'm not the kind of person that needs, or needs a ping Leatherman to get a replacement. Um, I got a garage number five. I don't think it has the same issue. I think, let's take a look. Eh, maybe. They are rounded. But they're also, yeah, I guess the garage number five would have the same issue. I don't get into hard, cutting hardwired that much. Uh, and when I do, I can kind of be a little more careful. But I'm carrying my arc now and not the garage number five. In fact, it's almost kind of becoming a reference. I'll probably give away some of my older tools uh, this Christmas, uh, along with some holsters to family and friends. Uh, will a groove belt fit in the BDU case? Um, so you're talking about, this was asked in a previous live stream, because the groove belt's got a little end piece on it. Um, let me switch over to bringing in a window here. Um, and if I remember right, I don't think it will. Let's double check, because I think they do give dimensions, or somebody maybe gave me a dimension in the live stream. Yeah, I guess somebody gave me a dimension of live stream. Uh, so no, I don't think it will. You probably would need to do the metal clip option or the open clip option uh, for that. All the new replacements seem to have this the issue, unfortunately. Yes, uh, because the old, but the old batches are okay. Yeah, and it looks like it, Leatherman's pivoting on that. My guess is that there was some other tool that like that the cutters rode into a groove a little bit lower. Uh, you can kind of see that in the arc where, and maybe this is even maybe a future design or something, right? They have this little shape that, this kind of little lip right here. And the funny part is that if you look at it right here, then yeah, the cutter is not going to get in the way. And it's only until you get to the very end. So I don't know if they had another version of this pliers that had a bigger lip and then they just were trying to account for that. So I, don't, I, I really can't say why they did that change, uh, but it is definitely a deliberate change because it's a full, it's kind of rounding it off instead of keeping it sharp. All right, so let's work on this. This is our bits. So I'm going to duplicate this guy, leaving our open clip a little crappier because I don't really want to sell the open clip. It's just offered for the people who absolutely want a plastic clip without having to buy some other clip. Um, but like I said, it's the only version I've ever had reported as failed at, at the clip point, basically. So we're going to call this bits third party, because that's what I've been starting to call the metal clip option. And we're going to show those third party parts. I have the tech lock and the metal clip that I like to use, uh, 3D modeled in place. Okay, so that guy's duplicated. And I guess we're going to go ahead and straight up just delete this geometry and then we'll add whatever we need back in. Let's go back to our full assembly. And here's tech lock large, tech lock small, R the holster, and the metal clip. And I won't worry about the Chicago screws, we'll show all that together. So, what your Let's clean this up. We've got so much geometry on top of each other. This is kind of a, a little bit of a mess here. GL built is a scratch over 3 8 uh, So, which is what? 6 or 9.5. Yeah, so it's definitely not going to fit through that. Now, you could put it on the dude, through the duty loop, I think. Let me double check the duty loop. Um, it's 5.8 by 7 millimeters, um, where the BDU loop is 44 by 5 millimeters. And there is a little bit more clearance. Actually, you know what? I might have actually lied because there is a little more clearance here than I claim on the belt size, but maybe it's five millimeters. Let's double check. 5.16. That's just to have a little bit of tolerance uh, above the five millimeter claim. All right, we're gonna hide 
all of this geometry and keep the arc geometry and the metal clip or third party clip geometry and then look at the assembly so you know, this is yeah we can definitely get some more bits in there I had one more bit there the other option is that if you want to use the large tech lock I mean you're already picking a bulky option you can just simply use the lower set of holes instead of the upper set of holes making the tech lock mount higher let me turn up the uh, sharpness a little bit here so that doesn't look like a video game so we'll accommodate that and we'll accommodate that so we definitely can get a lot more bits on here now if we don't worry about the tech lock uh, version so let's go ahead and do that knife train took the black cutters off my way I took the black cutters off my wave and those look better on the arc uh, now if they are the EOD cutters they're technically a little bit different as far as I don't know if they're the same material I'm not an expert on that but I know there's YouTube videos talking about the difference between the EOD and the regular cutters um, unless I guess I guess do they make the cutters black on the black wave that would be kind of cool uh, Oh, George, sorry, 3 16ths, 3 six. Sorry, I work in millimeters when I'm doing that, so 4.7. Yeah, so if it's 3 16 then yes, the groove belt should fit through there. Now, I could use the full pattern operations, uh, but when I'm at this stage, we're just going to go ahead and drag this 6 millimeters and do a couple copies of that. Because I, what I end up doing, the reason I'm not using the patterning is to do that little spine look. I kind of take the angle in a little bit for each one, and I'll, I'll do that tweak later instead of here on camera. So, whoops, I need to be showing the metal clip to see how close we want to get here. So that's perfectly doable. So how many more do we get? One, two, three, four, five. So we got six total instead of four, so another two. Let's just see what another one looks like, especially if we tweak pushing the bits down to the right a little bit. So let's go ahead and drag in one more, and then we'll shove all the bits down to the right, however far they need to be. And it barely fits on my little kind of platform I have below there. That works. So that's gonna be, well, I don't know. That might not be so bad. You gotta, you, the metal clip rises up. Uh, let's go back and look at the tech lock. I shouldn't have hidden those. The tech lock is very popular for, for uh, people who want to use it in place with like a duty belt, but they still want to be able to they want to be able to fit a duty belt, I guess just to say, um, but still take it off. And it's in this assembly group up here. In fact, I can show that whole group. So you might have issues with a large tech lock with the bits in that place. Let's make sure it's still compatible with a large tech lock. <laughs> Sweet, more bits. Uh, my wife is buying me the new holster for Christmas. She just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> like I said, I'm hoping to get this released this weekend. Um, I have installed like about six different plugins to try to get the get past the silly 100 variant limit on Shopify and every one of those kind of plugins basically lies on their product page about their capabilities you got to install them and then find out what their limitations are after you install them it's very very frustrating uh, but I actually found one that's made by a company that does some plugins I already have and I haven't gotten into digging into it but it instead of trying to make more variants, the all all the other plugins they do what, what are called virtual variants, which is basically it accounts to we put a comment on the order page that kind of tells you what colors and options the customer wanted. Well, that that doesn't work when there's 150 possible options on here, and I I need them to go through automated processing. I can't process these orders every night, even if there's only a, a few orders. I can't go in and manually type everybody's address and try to transpose that, so it needs to be automatic processing. 
So this is getting a little close down here. I wish I would have modeled the other half of the tech lock, but if, if I remember right, the other half of that tech lock is, is a clip that kind of pops into this middle here. Um, and somewhere, I, got, I don't even know where the tech lock parts are. They're somewhere in a bin in, my, in this room here. I think that'll be fine. We can render a bit in a minute and see how well that works. And I could go ahead and tweak the geometry down here. We'll round this off and then I'll clean it up later just so it looks nice right now. So one, two, three, let's see, count this on the mouse. One, two, three, four, five, six bits for the third party clip compatible, plus another four bits on the side. So 10 bits in total possible. Um, for anybody who hasn't seen the third party clip compatible, it is a version with a single hole at the top for a number eight or M4 Chicago screw and then a slot and the slot allows it to do multiple sizes. Now I have been asked on several live streams, can I make it fit the quick clip system? And it looks like they use two holes side by side. Um, and I would have to literally order it and make an entire separate model for that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. These little channels that, let me get into the model so that this highlights one face at a time. These two channels here are where the screws run that hold the scales on. And I would have to account for that to have side-by-side -side screws and make the whole thing thicker. And I don't think I really want to do that. Now let me catch up here. KT and Jacob, since the armored version has a front on it, could you put big storage on the front where it's easier to see? Yes, I did think about that. Let's go ahead and turn on the armored version. Uh, let me save here first. Um, I don't know that anybody wants to see all the bits hanging off, like having them on the back of the belt. Like I'm wearing this out and I, I wear this basically when I'm at work. Uh, and so I like I use this a heck of a lot today. In fact, I just used the Magna Cut to scrape like, you know, some paint off and things today. And it held up incredible. Like it still feels razor sharp. Um, in either case, I don't know that anybody wants to have the bits hanging off the front visually. It, I just I just don't know that people would buy it. As cool as it sounds, um, in that case, I, and I have thought about this before, is... is in that case, I think it'd be better to make a standalone bit holder that could go on your belt. Maybe something you can even undock uh, would be a better uh, option for that. Um, but we actually do need to maybe do some tweaks. Let's see. Let me go look at my list here. Ah, so the last tweaks we were going to talk about was on the armored version. So let's turn that back on. And let's turn the arc on. Yeah, the cutters on the black wave are black. They look good on the stainless plier head. I bet you that does look really good. Like, cause I actually thought about taking the stainless steel screw off of my garage number five to give me that contrast on the arc. Um, and if you did want to do that, by the way, there's a little bit of space here in this cutout. I kind of left deliberately um, for anybody who, who wants to go ahead and do that. Um, because it's actually a little bit larger size on the garage number five also. Uh, let me catch up some chat here. Uh, synthesize, got my arc today, replacing black cutters. Do not have the gap, but the stock did. Huge gap. All right. So did, there, did you end up getting a new, brand new arc and they gave you the new cutters? Or you got replacement cutters today. I guess is, I'm a little bit curious about that. Uh, what website do I go to to get this amazing holster? Uh, Ryan Pax. Uh, that is zapwizard.com. It will be released this weekend, pending uh, you know uh, everything working out as far as me being able to get all the updates to the website, all the renderings done. Um, all of the different variants. So this holster right now, not including the armored version, let's go to our files here. 
Um, this guy could go away. So that's 11, vari 11 variants of the holster. That doesn't include the armored version. So now the armored version is going to basically add another 11. Oh, and then I'm going to make a smeared version because there's lots of people who want to do left-handed versions. Those I probably will just do as an option. I won't render every possible thing out, but I might. It's possible for me to do that. Um, and then all the each one of these gets multiple renderings, multiple views. So this view that I've sent out in some of the teaser emails, um, I generate these renderings in every single color that's offered. Um, even if I don't offer the color on my website because of the shapeways limitations, it will still be, I'll still render it out so I can have that ability to show it if somebody, nobody's ordered pink in six years and uh, that has been available. And so I don't list pink on my website anymore uh, just to save on the number of options. And all that takes time. And it's just basically a matter of time to get this all out here ready for you guys. All right, so we're switching to the armored version. So my armored version, just due to make it easier, I made it a completely separate body here instead of a Boolean addition. And we're going to switch over to that. Give me one second. Sorry about all the flashing and ghosting. That's the way this kind of, any kind of CAD works, actually. And the last thing I was talking about, there's so many people who want the pocket clip. And there's also people who want the barnacle bit holder to work with the armored version. So the options are to provide a cutout such that the pocket clip can exit, provide a bulge, meaning a piece of plastic that comes up and over, um, the reason I don't like the cutout is that it this it leaves a corner that could snag, but we might be able to clean that up in a way where it won't create something that snags. And then the pocket clip's going to be just the outside surface. Um, I think there's enough people who really want the pocket clip because the problem with the I made this compatible with the uh, lanyard, but you have to go buy that from Leatherman where, of course, the pocket clips comes with your tool. Now, of course, we'll have to also account for the bottom edge of the pocket clip. Um, so i got to figure out, we're going to kind of render up both, and maybe we'll get some opinions on that. I can hide all of this now. And save before we start doing these changes. Ah, okay, so this size says you ordered replacement cutters with it. Uh, your eyes get older contrast. As your eyes get older, contrast is more of a priority. Oh, yeah, color contrast. So first, before I screw up what I've already prototyped, let's just give ourselves the ability to play with this without accidentally destroying our previous geometry by just making a copy. And we're going to name this Armored Pocket Cutout. And this might, if I can get an, past that variant limit, um, it's possible, it's just a matter of time, but it's possible that I could start offering a lot more combinations. Like, do you want the ratchet holder on the left? Do you want the ratchet holder on the right? Do you want no ratchet holder, extra bits on the right? And things like that uh, because all these combinations are very modular and I would love to be able to do that again it's time to pump out the I can either just pump out the files and just give you the options that's actually faster than of course doing all the renderings but having it so people can actually see what they're ordering is a, is a big deal now I don't know that I'm gonna make this fit the barnacle bit holder that's unfortunately a much wider cutout um, even though it would increase my sales of barnacle bit holders just may not be able to do that um, okay, so we're going to grab, let me hide the metal clip so I don't accidentally change it or the bits for the metal clip. And we're going to grab this face and this face, and it might be nice. I might have to delete those rounds to make it play nice. And I have this perfectly centered around the thumb tab cutout. 
And if I move it down, it's going to be look a little weird. Let's just see what it looks like if I move it down. Yeah, okay, you're going to be nice for a second, and then it's locking out. There it goes. 6.2. Nope, not going to be nice. I think recalculating these rounds on another round is what's causing a little bit of the... It doesn't like to do the calculation. A bunch of compound basically curves, even though they look like simple rounds, but like I said, they're on top of a another curved surface. If I delete those, I can always re-add them. So 6 point, maybe 6.3 millimeters. Yep, that was what was causing the issue. What was the round on these? Half a millimeter. Looks like it doesn't want to do that top side. Let's try, can you do just that edge? And then we'll do this one after. Not an issue when I, it's a little bit more of an issue here when I'm doing this kind of out of order. Where I'm deleting and adding. So now we end up with a little bit of an offset. That might have to be the trade-off. Might actually look okay because the pocket clip frames it. The other option is to move the other side to match. And then we're going to have to add a cutout for the pocket clip. So let's bring this geometry in and this. And then we're going to kind of clean this up after we do just the cutout that we know we actually need. So this is the part where I talk about we're going to have an overhang, right? That's going to snag. And it's also, you know, a big kind of piece overhanging that's just going to be too flexible. This other piece is kind of supported in two different ways, so it's not as much of an issue. So first, let's just look at what type of round looks good up here. Providing a nice guide for that to fall in. I pretty much should match the round at the right to look good and then I think we will round this off in a full round and the simplest way to do that is going to just be to cut it away uh, knife trains asking if I got a count on Instagram yes I do um, I just don't turn on Instagram but I don't really get on Instagram um, I I've been told I should and that I'm leaving plenty of money on the table for people to find my stuff. Um, I'm happy with people finding my stuff and being enthusiastic about it, but I also don't want... Um, I don't want the, the people who click on pictures without reading any text in order to buy something. How about that? There are too many instances of people buying stuff and going, um, I didn't know that this was a thing or... And then they, that looks like a nice little stubby piece here. I need to adjust that a little bit. Too many, too many instances of people buying something like from my website and then complaining about a feature that's printed like right on the first line of the website. And it's like, I'm sorry, reading comprehension problems, people. And I don't, and I find that those are the people who end up just buying stuff by looking at a picture. Um, in fact. I'm going to have to claim it as a loss on my taxes this year, but after much back and forth with a customer who ordered um, 15 of the basically ratchet handles that I sell, because he thought they were ratchet, he thought they were just Leatherman ratchets that he was getting for $15. And um, actually, no, he bought way more than 15 It was about $100 of material, and it's like... You weren't getting leather and ratchets, and his, his argument was, oh, well, they're in the picture, and then it becomes a PayPal argument, and no seller wins a PayPal argument. Let's try this without a full round so it doesn't look like a little stubby arm hanging out there. This is what I didn't like. 
might even just straight cut this and bend this off and then that one little corner is not armored and it won't be a big deal if that one little corner is not armored obviously because it's not prone to rubbing up against something so we're just going to do that and that will probably look better and this is kind of way the holster is anyways beforehand as in before we've added the armored version it has this little these little drop offs that uh, I think look pretty good they also make it so that you can grab the tool out easier and so I need to pull this sketch away always read the specs as an engineer always read the specs not everybody does Yeah, I think that'll be better. It's kind of poking out. Might have to adjust the way the top looks. Uh, so, I don't know, semi-armored? Let's look at the, let me round some couple things off and then we'll look at this in key shot with it fully rendered, or not fully rendered, but very quickly rendered and see if we like it. I'm going to, real quick, chop this corner down a little bit so it looks better something like that one of the beautiful things about solid edge just sketches or tools they just just kind of almost sculpt what you want it to look like now that got hair thin here but when we round this it should hopefully adjust it now it's going to own it that's right, because it's rounding by 0.5. Oh, that basically got rid of what I just added. Uh, let's try rounding that first. This second, and it might we have to maybe do a smaller round to keep that nicer edge. That's fine. All right, we can look at this in, in 3D here like this. Allows you to have the pocket clip, still armors a lot of the front. I don't think anybody's really going to end up rubbing this corner against something. It's more that you'd rub the face against the wall or floor. Um, might try to make this look a little better at the top. Or I offer this as a completely separate variant. Um, that's going to be something I'm going to have to think about. I don't know if anybody has any particular opinions about it. Uh, so it's basically that versus nice and nice and symmetrical versus utilitarian and asymmetrical. And then if you ask why I can't have it on the back side where the pocket clip normally is, is that's where your belt goes and and so that's where that, so you still have to have the pocket clip on the blade. You still have to move the pocket clip to the blade side. I think. I think maybe we tweak the top a hair. I don't know. It's that asymmetry is, you know, asymmetry kills anybody who, who likes symmetry. And there's plenty of people that like asymmetry, but. Let's see about copying this exact same geometry such that this at least looks locally symmetrical. And maybe that will look good enough. The George can live with it. Howdy, Jonathan Russell. Sorry are you late? What have I missed? Uh, lots and lots of little tweaks. You can go back and watch the live stream right now. We're working on the armored version of the holster, trying to get a pocket clip into it such that people don't have to modify it. The pocket clip even can work as a lanyard clip because they did put that little hole there. And see if we can come up with a version that people like. Unfortunately, I've already shown off the armored version, so I guarantee that I'm also going to get people at the same time who are going to say, hey, I want the regular armored version. I don't care about the pocket clip. I'll close that over here. 
So that will be locally symmetrical. It might look good. Let's find out. These are kind of experiments and the whole point of this. I think that looks a lot better that way. Let's add the rounds and finish it off. So this has a one millimeter round on this side and I think a half millimeter on the back side. Oh, but I did a half millimeter here. <laughs> All right, one second. We'll have to do some adjustments to, we'll do a blend operation. That allows me to do a variable radius that is one millimeter at the top. And we'll go down to 0.5 at the end. And that will merge it enough that I don't know that many people would ever notice that it's a slightly different radius. And then the inside should be 0.5. Let's clean up these sketches I don't need anymore just to get them out of our face. And let's turn on the different options and then render this up real quick just to see if we like the way it looks overall. Uh, so let's turn on the socket driver and 711 L holder and the BDU loops, bits for the BDU bits. All right. That's gonna be enough to do a render save before we send it off uh, turn on at least the bit extender or the ratchet driver also because actually I mean it's asymmetrical already right you got the 711L holder on the side you got bits stuck all over the thing um, so I don't know I kind of like this now Is the middle level with the clip? No. Uh, now that you say it, it would probably look better that way now if we're going to do it, where we copy this kind of angle. Because this angle was, the way this popped up was specifically to go with the lanyard loop, and I copied that. Uh, this is something I call design inertia, right? You, you copy a design from a previous design, you don't change it, and then you keep that for an ungodly amount of time and keeps going and keeps going. So I think that would be a good thing. Let's go ahead and look at this in Keyshot. And that'll take just a second. I'm going to turn down the amount of resolution to make this run faster. Because uh, this is just going to be the quick and dirty look that outside, looking at this outside of CAD can be very helpful. Um, because the CAD's got outlines and you're looking at it without perspective. I can turn perspective on in CAD but it's even easier to just do this, to pop this out into Keyshot, uh, wait for the material files to load. I'll get a drink while we're doing that. Yeah, the Knife Train, the only issue with making a separate variant is just all the work that's involved. Um, I don't think this will look bad, but we'll try this without the pocket clip too, just to see what it looks like without the pocket clip. Uh, all right, now it's fully rendered. So this is, by the way, all the materials I have. So black or blue. And just to make this look a little better, we'll pull in the materials I made specifically. They were in a previous version of Keyshot. Uh, so we got the arc DLC coating. Drag those in. This will. You know, because the contrast is going to affect this. We'll do all the implements essentially the same material just to make this quick and dirty. Although the pliers have a slightly different sheen. Those screws are black. I have a brushed finish for the front. I think it's going to come in at the wrong angle, but that doesn't matter. copy that over actually the plier is a more accurate version of what is on there and 
anodized. Oops, I need to go back a folder. Anodized black for the 711L holder. And that's enough that we can at least take a look at this and see if, if we like it. And then we gotta hide the pocket clip and see if it still looks silly. Now this version, the way I got this now, maybe I could make this compatible with a barnacle bit holder. I'd have to think about that. It would, it would probably, or the other reality is to try to make a barnacle bit holder is compatible with this, but. <laughs> Zap your demand, thank you. I don't really use a pocket clip, but that does look really good. Yeah, I don't think this looks terrible. Now the amount of flexibility in the plastic here so if i switch over to camera to the actual armored holster right well let's do this i have more than one prototype for the armored holster in fact this is the one i don't necessarily care about this is the duty loop let's prototype this live by breaking our holster um see if the leather and the scissors can cut this i really doubt it <laughs> but we'll at least score it. This will kind of show how tough the material is, by the way, is trying to kind of score the plastic. And we'll do a cut along here and see if we can score this. And if we're lucky, it'll snap right there, especially if I apply the right pressure. Here. and that went flying but there we got a really rough prototype <laughs> see how this looks and also see if uh, the flexibility of this arm is going to be an issue and it works with the barnacle bit holder kind of does if I just move that over um, so let me take the barnacle bit holder off of my arc Get the bit out of there. The bit, gotta kind of reach in and grab that. Uh, from your perspective, it was a little scary. It was not that close on, in my perspective. Uh, you're kind of looking over my, over the left here. And I guess I need the pocket clip and I don't know where my arc pocket clip is. So I will grab the garage number five pocket clip that I do have sitting right here. People who make the Volti are making a little flashlight that goes into the pocket clip screws. Uh, he's, I don't know if he's making it yet, but he's hes talked about it. Oh, I guess we have an issue with the pocket clip hitting where we didn't move that bottom edge. So, well, we know the pocket clip will fit in CAD. So that is more flexy. It's not a big deal because all it's going to do is push against the surface. Now I do actually, I could, let's go back to CAD. Let's pause this. I do have room that I can put a stiffening rib in the middle. And I think that might be a solution. Throw those little bits away. Um, Yeah, this got more complicated than I think it was going to be. But let's just see what we can do. Um, we can... Doing the angles can be a little bit tricky. I can do it in a couple of different ways. But adding a stiffening rib would be easy. Making it circular so it has least likely ability to bend. Just thicken that up. And we want that to start a little higher. Since that's an arc, that will be fine. 
Stiffening rib, raising the height to be level with the clip. Yeah, I think both of those things will help. I guess, actually I should only extend the stiffening rib to about here for now. In fact, no, we'll do the stiffening rib labor later because it's going to be harder to do this. What I'm trying to think of is how, if I have just the middle come up, that might kind of look cool actually. It'll help with the asymmetry. Just trying to figure out how I want it to meet up over here with this feature. And we can do this with a couple of different cutaways and things pretty easily. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be nice and quick. Would filling in the oval help? Yes, it would have help with the stiffness. Um, I like that exposed, you know, Leatherman Arc logo right there. And it matches the curve here. But of course, yeah, filling that in would, would definitely help. But again, it's a flexible material too. It's not a huge deal if uh, it kind of ends up moving on you or anyways. We're going to just cut away this much of it for now. And I can use the loft tool to, or the, or the path tool to kind of bring these together. I think my issue is that where this terminates, I'm going to have to do something creative. The, the other problem is that this entire front is, is also curved. So it's a little bit more complex geometry here that we're playing with, but nothing impossible. I think what I want to do is Yeah, I think I know what I want to do. All right, one second. It is either auto-saving or calculating something. Here we go. Starting from here, I'm just going to cut all of this geometry away for now, and we'll re-add it in a, basically with a different kind of slope. By first extruding out this face to match now I could do something silly. I could literally match the entire curve of the pocket clip. I don't know because because of, of the other uh, the other end of the clamps or not the clamps the spring fingers. All right, sorry. I'm trying to think while trying to talk at the same time. Thanks for dropping by, Orion Packs. Okay, I just have to activate this part so I can bring in the features from it. I guess we're going to have to raise up that other side. So we might just redo all that top geometry for this particular variant. So let's just go delete all of that because it's influencing our design in a way that is negative when we might come out with something better if we just redo it. So if I come up basically perfectly even with the pocket clip would look the best in the end. Then come off at a tangent to the pocket clip. Top tangent, please. Thank you. And then stop even with the top of the tool or the top of the holster. Doesn't matter which. And then we'll arc, right, let's see, is that the spot I want? I think we'll go to the, well, it doesn't matter which side to go to. Just trying to find the geometry that, that's going to become, well, I guess I'm modeling top edge. I do need to stay, stick to a top edge. All right, one second, let me delete those. And I'm also sorry that the these lines are probably almost invisible to you. Uh, I can maybe lower my resolution on future streams so that it's a little more visible. But having a large image in CAD is very helpful. So, 30 millimeter, and then I gotta chop this right here. OK. 
Okay, and then I, in this case, I'm gonna, am gonna need a sketch because I'm going to be extruding from a corner that is not normal. So I gotta split this guy. Once I can find my split tool, I don't use a split very often. There it is. Split this line at that point. There we go. So I can do a sweep operation. That's our path. That's our shape. And it failed. Why did it fail? It might be the rounds. We can re-add the rounds later. Because one of those rounds might not be an actual round at that position. It might end up being almost a compound curve. While well, CAD's capable of, of handling shapes and things like that, sometimes when you're doing these operations, it's better just to be simple. No, it still doesn't want to do it. Why don't you want to do that? Let's see here. First of all, can you extrude that shape without any issue? Don't see any glitches in it. Let's go ahead and extrude it out. Well, no. Hmm. That should be able to be perfectly capable of doing that. <laughs> you murdered the prototype in the name of science. <laughs> what did you miss? Yeah, well, it's a prototype and uh, I got piles of them and piles of them and piles of them. I'm really bad lately. I, used, I usually label these all so I know exactly what I changed. Instead, it's just usually ends up being just the latest uh, version of it. Why can't you do that sweep operation? Let's try rounding. I think it might be this very, that small top edge right here. It may not like because that's a very that's a small radius in comparison. So let's go like ten. It's also got it's also rounding an external or a concave and a convex shape at the same time, the top edge of this and the bottom edge of this. And we could get rid of one of those. There we go. It was just, it was that curve up there. And we'll worry about cutting away the top to look better once we figure out how do we get this to wrap and connect to the other side. There's a couple meth things I could do, a couple methods I could use. Um, I can do a 3D sweep. That's a little bit trickier to do. I can just bring this up to meet it via a small like cutout, but I'd obviously want it to still kind of follow. I still want it to follow this arc. Or we just simply drop it as soon as it past the pocket clip. That actually could look better where it comes up, matches the pocket clip, and then drops down to the last second to meet the other geometry. That's all a little bit trickier to do. Hmm. Any opinions? <laughs> I want to cover all the way to the very top of the tool because it is likely that you're like, that's one reason I wanted to make sure I look at this from the side profile. I wanted to make sure that even though this is almost right at the edge, that you still had some sort of bump out that was further than the tool and you could vary. So I still want to bump out that's further than the edge of the tool up here. So I don't think I want to just copy the curve that's on the pocket clip, but it could kind of curve down and back. Or it could come up, curve down and back. There's a couple different options there. Solid Edge is really solid, but the price is also quite hefty. Uh, yeah, Solid Edge can be expensive. Uh, it's not much different than Solid Works, though. So, but Solid Works has got so much marketing into schools and people teach, and inventors doing the same thing now. 
so many people are learning it that they go to new jobs and they kind of say, hey, how come you're not using SolidWorks and everybody starts using it? Um, Solid Edge, this synchronous mode where I'm working like this makes this kind of work so much easier to do. I there's, there's no way I can do this if you know if this oval was sketch number fifteen. I just couldn't couldn't work that way. I'm having a hard time visualizing how we want to make this reconnect. I almost need to bring in, and that's one reason we have the made a copy of the regular armor view and see how much of that geometry do we want to bring back in. We could almost bring in that geometry now. That actually is really close to working. So, there's a couple things I could do. I could literally bring in that geometry and then just merge it at the last second. Or try to extrude this along a curve. That's actually going to be the better way to do this. Okay, we'll do that. Um, I, can easy, I can do this faster than I can explain it. we want a vertical line right about here and one second it rotated the my vertical is not actually vertical here I want to be parallel to this end line there we go that works And then we're just going to revolve this. Off in this direction. Come on, go the other way. I don't care how far. And then we'll do a cutaway and then we'll merge this at the last second. And we'll see how that looks. Uh, we'll cut around the shape of the tool, which is also the shape of my holster. Yeah, drop it off at the top of the clip. Sorry if I'm kind of muttering. I'm thinking at the same time while trying to read, while trying to work, while trying to CAD. All right. We'll bring that down like this. And I, this sense this ends in a curve. I need to put a little bit, bit of an off cut, a line going off to nowhere. And then I can do this as an open-ended cut. Whoops, oh, I'm cutting away over there too. I don't want to do that. Oh, that's right, we got the whole, we got the whole blade. So do I match the blade cut? I think I need to match the blade position instead. How was it done on the other piece? Because it looked good on the other guy. Sorry, one second. Let me turn this up. So this one, we did it to the blade side. And that looks good. So let's keep it that way. And what's our radius here? Six millimeters. Sometimes I'm too fast for the cat. I'm typing things before the window's up. Okay, now we can extrude this along that side. Cut that all away. Come on. I need to zoom out so I can move the mouse further. And then we'll merge these with a loft operation. In fact, I might be able to, let's first of all remove this round. And I might be able to make that merge. So this is now merged as a single face. I will do the same on the back side. I can always re-add that round. Come on, delete the round. Next thing is coming up with a face that this is going to merge to. Um, 
because we kind of want to get back to having that oval shape. So I have to add some geometry and delete some things and come up with what our final merge shape is going to be. Uh, in this case, I need to match the addition we already had because that addition already had basically the arc uh, lettering and the scale perfectly kind of matched. So let's pull that round in. And whoops, I'm sorry, hit the wrong button. We hide the armor again. That little tiny sketch is all I need to cut this out in a small circle. And then I can actually, let's see if we're lucky, I can just delete that. Yep, there we go. Because it was tangent to that edge, so it was happy to delete it. We pull this in until it meets where the arc ends. We'll have to maybe add a little bit of geometry here. And then that will be our little pop down. Or we can make that go more gently to match the pocket clip. We'll adjust that in a minute. Uh, let me re-add that geometry that I needed a second here. All right, uh, Solid Edge is getting into a mode right now where it is not being happy. And you guys can't tell, but um, I just tried to do an undo operation. And when the undo operations start failing, that usually means there's some sort of geometry bug. And usually I need to open and close the file or I risk doing a crash. That's just something I've experienced over the years. Not really an issue with the software necessarily. It's just that I'm doing a lot of complex operations on top of each other and why are you not tangent we'll fix that in a minute this looks messy but it'll get all cleaned up in a second You can just drop down messy blocks and then delete what you don't need. And we said this had a six millimeter round. All right. I think that will get us started. It's gonna be tricky to get this to merge in because this has this internal curve. The loft operation can do it to a certain degree. Let's look at what we had before. So before we came all the way down with a full arc and then just a little bump up. We could still do something similar and even re-add in some of this geometry and just merge this. But I think it might look better if we actually kind of keep going with the curve that we have on the pocket clip so it just it comes up on both sides instead of one side if it comes on one side it's going to make it look even more asymmetrical so to do that we will end up cutting away some of the pocket clip or some of the uh, sorry some of the knife cutout area Back all the way back to where this pocket clip rise kind of starts out and we'll worry about merging the rest of it later making it look good and we'll basically pull this so that it follows that same kind of profile. Now the tricky part is we want this to follow the profile after this has been rotated. And we can do that. If I can get this adjusted just right. It's the best way to do that. Best way to do that is just to cut 
rotate the whole thing, merge this, emerge across this much geometry, then recut out the entire thing. Uh, okay, this is going to look messy, but it's going to get us there. Um, it looks like I'm redoing a whole bunch of geometry, but this will be the fastest way to get us there. And it'll actually end up working out in the end. sketch to be higher up. Above the above the clip or the uh, tool location. Alright, let's see here. Don't need that sketch anymore. Come on, give me my line. From here to here. In fact, we're gonna let's see here. There we go. Let's talk about bringing this over. Merging that face. Same thing on this side. And then recutting this and then it'll keep that same profile the whole way curious how many of the uh, people that are on here are now asleep <laughs> sorry this is how CAD works when it's kind of exciting to do some of the the cooler parts but when you got to get into the minutia of little tiny adjustments over and over and just experimenting it takes a little more time So that's right we wanted a well we're not going to put around on this now we'll put it around after we trim it now if you're doing it again if you're doing a full parametric design where you got to say scale this uh mathematically to fit, you know, three different kinds of products. You wouldn't do this type of level. But for me, this is kind of almost works like sculpting where I just want to come up with an end result and it's just a matter of adding and subtracting like, like you would do with uh, clay or anything else. And we'll go ahead and bring in our geometry from the original. And cut out our piece here now. Come on, give me that. And I can't hardly see where this other edge is. <laughs> put another pot put on another pot of coffee. Alright, need to turn this off so it's not in my way here. There we go. And I know there's plenty of people who do live streams where they're just doing art and, and hardly talking and at least trying to make sure you guys know what's going on because like I said I do know that I'm running 4k you guys are running 1080p I don't think there's any I don't know if there's a way to make YouTube stream 4k uh, depends on what screen you're looking at it on too of course that is getting better looking matches the pocket clip we can still do our round here and just add that geometry and so we just got to worry about merging these kind of faces together and so for that we're going to go ahead and oh that's right this was a blend can I delete multiple edges it's gonna blend better merge better if there isn't a bunch of rounds and geometry that is gonna kind of interfere with that
Yeah, YouTube will do 4K all day long for a video, but not necessarily for a live stream. Can I delete that round and get away with it? Yes, I can. We'll fix that later. Sorta. So what I want to do is get this bottom edge projected onto that other face. So in that case, I do want to bring I do want to bring that two millimeter round back in. Hmm. It's going to thin out when it does this merge. I don't really want it to necessarily, but it kind of has to because of the way the blade is. It's not any issue with the structure. I guess it'll be okay because we're going to end up adding a sidewall in a minute. Uh, so we'll try a loft operation, but I before I do that, I am going to kill this because again the undo upper the undo it's like the undo cache gets an issue, and when that happens and I do something and it's going to screw up and I can't undo it, of course that's a big deal. So we're just going to close Solid Edge and reopen it real quick. We'll kill Key Shot while we're at it. And it takes a minute to close. Does anybody have any feedback while that's going on? You can switch over to our little prototype here. So we'll end up, I think this will actually look better. So it was a good suggestion to follow the pocket clip because it'll end up with a smoother transition. Um, all right, solid, bring solid edge back in. And catch up on Watching football, listening to me. <laughs> I do, uh, by the way, when I'm working on like the pit boy and things, I will pull up somebody who's playing Fallout 4, right? Um, even though I haven't played it in forever. Uh, it's kind of nice to be able to watch like somebody on Twitch and then you can still kind of get some input. Um, and there's a few times where I've pulled up just like an art artist stream or something just so that, yeah, maybe, I'm, I'm, maybe I am your background noise. That's one of the beautiful things about YouTube, right? All right, there we go. Yeah, I think this will look, I think this will look good when we get done. I can see what it looks like, but just because I can, I'm a little bit better imagining CAD than most people. Uh, but again, I also designed this way with everything kind of photo real so that people can see what the final product looks like in other CAD programs, lots of people will do, you know, completely artificial colors. Um, they won't apply all the rounding and things until the very end, which is just fine. But not necessarily the way I work. So we're going to drop that face and loft it into this face. And we are going to do it. Normal to selection. In fact, we might want to go back. Well, no, that will work. And that doesn't actually tell me what radius that is, so we'll have to see what radius gets close to that. 20. Um, even though, like I said, we'll, we'll pull this into the rendering later. These kind of don't look even right now, but in reality, they're so subtly different. I don't know if anybody will notice. And now we can pull this, extrude this up. Re-adding that geometry. And bringing our sidewall in. And let's do that top cut we did earlier just so this looks not distracting the same cut we did previously where it's symmetrical around the cutout in the piece. This one I'm going to have to bring in 
outside cut there. And we forgot to round those off too. Let me clean up sketches so this is not in our face. We rounded these by six, I believe, previously. Actually, I'm not going to round that side yet because we're going to be doing some other geometry over there. All right, we need to add this curve back in. And I can either just get close by rounding this until we almost meet. Or I'm gonna have to start doing a whole bunch of cleanup and I think I'm just gonna have to go, go ahead and do the cleanup and do this proper. Get rid of all these rounds that I will have to re-add later, but they'll just get in the way right now. Come on. Delete those two, and then you can delete that one. Really doesn't want to delete that one. Oh, I guess because this is curved here. All right, so I know, I know what I need to do. I'm going to force this face to be tangent to that face. Barely moved it. So that means I don't actually need to adjust that curve. All right, so let's get this ratchet driver out of our face. Delete all that, and now I can either re-add the curve from this side, or just see if this is going to be successful. So this was 9.68. That doesn't match. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna that's gonna be a little bit. We're gonna have to do this a different way. I know I say I keep doing things quick and dirty, but. Come on. Give me a circle. Thank you. So circle started here. That's what we want it to end up following. And all right, we can add this, like I said, in a dirty way, and then we can clean it up. in order to get all of our other curves and other pieces that we need out of this. I'm just gonna bring it all the way in to here. Delete these two internal faces so that gets merged. Delete these external faces. This one may not work. No, it's not going to. I can delete that much of it. No? Yes, you can. I'll just chop you off. Now the sketch is getting in our way. And if it's nice, it will just cleanly delete these chunks for us and get rid of some of it. All right, sorry, I'm probably mumbling again. I've noticed that I've on my streams, I end up getting concentrated and then my voice gets lower and lower. And then I probably just woke some people up by raising my voice. All right. <laughs> Don't need these rounds for getting in the way. There we go. That's what we want to see. All this coming together. Now we just need to work on making that look nice. Doesn't have to look nice. Making that functionally nice on the inside. We can just do that with kind of merging this with two rounds. And no one's really ever going to see it on the inside. Huh. 
like watching a SolidWorks tutorial. Except for it is Solid Edge. <laughs> I think that was a one million around before. Uh, let me double check from our previous version. Don't want to jam up the blade. So that was only a half millimeter round before. These amount of operations is why the uh, armored holster had to be kind of become its own entire holster body instead of just an add-on to the existing body. There's just too many other changes that were going on all at the same time to make the modular kind of Boolean function work. We'll round that a little bit more. Uh, we did say we were going to round this later. Now's the time. This, I don't know, I might clean this up a little bit. It's, oh, I know how I can clean it up. Let's see here. I need to clean it up with a revolve operation. And it's just going to be tricky to merge in the very end of it. Um, so I need a plane. Oh, this is going to be real tricky because of it's now symmetrical along a cutout that is also. All right, that's what. Okay, sorry. I'm not talking again here. Another thing that the issue is that the cutout is kind of breaking the symmetry, but it's in a, another asymmetrical way. But I think I got a solution that will get us this little weirdness over here cut away. So we'll do that. And we'll come at like a 45 degree angle. And we'll tweak this after we do this cutout. And I'll go ahead and do this one as a closed shape because we're going to revolve it. And clean this up. And that and that don't need anymore. So just trying to make this a little bit nicer. Let's pull this back as far as the CAD will let us. Uh, might need to move all the rounds. Should put the tool in now and see how much room there is. Um, well, I don't, actually do know that there's clearance. Uh, this entire arc goes over the whole tool. Uh, so there's not... That's part of the idea behind the armored version is that there's enough space that you can bump into something without crunching your tool. Uh, such that if you had grit or something behind your tool... It wouldn't uh, kind of add to that. So there's definitely plenty of room there. We're just going to pull this back till one millimeter. There we go. That'll get rid of the weird kind of bump that was happening to the, for the most part. And then give us a nice lead in for the knife. All right, now I can round this back all off and see what this looks like. Uh, whoops, there's some glitches up here at the very top. That's supposed to be tangent to that. And I guess it is. Let's just look at these and go They're rounded by a quarter of an inch. All right, so we round these. That looks good from a nice profile view. This will also be quite, should be stiffer now because it's basically got 3D geometry holding one whole side up and a slight arc to the entire thing on more than one axis, uh, more than one axis. All right, now I'm gonna have to do, let's see. Can I just get away with a half millimeter round? Because we actually had a one millimeter round before. I'd rather have that top edge 
half a mil. It kind of looks rounded in here, like like looks soft, but actually half a millimeter can actually end up feeling sh a little sharp. Uh, not sharp, but I'd rather have the top edge be softened. So what we'll do is a variable radius again. This entire shape and starting here and here at 0.5 millimeters but then up here and here going to one and that will soften that edge so that if you push up against this with your hand or something you don't feel like you're jabbing yourself it's a subtle difference but when you actually got uh, you know something that you're actually handling it'll make it it'll make a bigger difference all right One second, what happened to the blade on my tool? Is my tool upside down now? I was messing with this earlier. It is upside down now. I was messing this with when we were doing the ruler design, and so it's installed backwards right now. Let's fix that real quick. get sorry for the giant green screen I can see what I'm doing I need to get into the very very middle of this and just rotate him 180 degrees yep everything lines up and now I got to turn the other pocket clip back on and hide the current so that's the default pocket clip location where it's installed on the scissor side. And we'll turn on the blade side pocket clip. There we go. Now we can double check there's space around the blade, there's space around the thumb tab. And everything else should be the same as what's already prototyped. So hopefully I can rele release this this weekend without having to make another version. Now I might go ahead and 3D print this uh, tomorrow uh, at the office and just see how this kind of final version comes out. I think that kind of looks pretty good. Uh, let me catch up on some chat. Don't buy Jamal as you call it. It's great to hear how you're working through stuff real time. Thank you. Also helps to follow along with what you're doing. Yeah, I just noticed that like I kind of jump through my live stream to make sure things are working like uh and that i'm being trying to uh make sure that i'm talking loud enough um uh, i did find my microphone was you know very sensitive so it, it does seem to work even if i'm mumbling it's just more a matter of not trying to jar people awake uh <laughs> if they are asleep by suddenly going loud let's see what this looks like in key shot real quick i think we might be done with a version that works with a pocket clip, because of the asymmetry, it may end up being another variant. <laughs> now Knife Train wants this version, so that's probably a good sign. It looks way beefier and maintains the look or even improved it. I It might, uh, because I don't know that I liked the way, well, where my other armored prototype went. Um, should be right here. Oh, I know where it is. It's on my desk at work because I was wearing it today and got my uh, other version. Uh, in either case, uh, I didn't like the way the bump came up. And I'd like it better on this one. It's more subtle. And let's go ahead and do a couple tweaks that I always do in Keyshot, which is bring in a slightly better environment. Turn on global lighting because it really helps a little bit. I guess it doesn't show up much different over here. We'll turn that back off just for speed. And really roughly bring in just some of the materials for Leatherman, Arc. Just drop that into couple of pieces that matter in this view comes that the 
brush finish. And the blade is DLC. And the screws are DLC. And then the pliers. Now I, I actually got, of course, a version of the arc. I could just bring the entire arc already ready to go, but I have, have to align that and everything. And I guess we turned off the ratchet drivers and stuff, but I don't know. This might even work as the default armored version. It allows you to keep the pocket clip. I might go back and tweak it to see if I can get the barnacle bit holder or update the barnacle bit holder to fit it. I can't make the barnacle bit holder much smaller because the bits is only a certain size. Even if you have the screws off, it's not terrible. But I think if I had, I think people are going to want something there, right? The reason why people want the barnacle bit holder is those silly holes sitting there, and it bothers people. In this case, I kind of like that. That was a very good suggestion to follow the pocket clip. This won't really snag on something. It's big enough, and it's close enough to the tool. And I will go back, and I'm going to add this to my task list. Well, actually, we can do that in a few seconds. Uh, we do still want, I think, a center stiffening rib along there. And that would just maybe, maybe make sure that if there's somebody who's got this under constant water, stopping that from, say, warping if they're uh, exposing to that. The other thing is that these, hol these holsters... Uh, you'll lose a little bit of the dye color, but you can dishwasher, or these are basically go through the dishwasher, or you can, in other words, you can wash them with hot water and not have to worry about the plastic. Uh, you just wash it and dry it. It does have a slightly porous surface, uh, but the actual underlying material, once you get down just the micron under the surface, is fully solid. Looking at it, possibly, could you bevel it under the clip enough to get a fingernail to lift it? Under the, uh, get, to get a fingernail under the pocket clip? I mean, why, oh, so you could maybe put something on the tool while the clip, like, <laughs> a money clip or a little note or something like that? That'd be a little harder to do. It would require a wider cutout. Um... And I don't really want to extend this any further than it has to be because it extends this entire arm. So I don't know if I would go for that. Uh, we're going to make this follow this shape. So I, uh, bear with me while I come up with that sketch. And I'm trying to find its silhouette edge, which is here. Once you find one, you can at least find the others because they're all going to follow in line with each other. And we'll go ahead and make it stop. And right about here. I can always move it afterwards. Oh, am I not locked on that sketch? One second here. Some of the tools, like the trim tool, don't doesn't work unless you're locked onto a sketch. And I don't want it to come popping out the backside here. There's the stiffening rib. It's pretty thick and won't get in the way. Well, oh wait, it might get in the way of the scale or, or the... Okay, this can't be any bigger than this surface here because when you're pulling the tool out, those guys are gonna cl close in on each other. So, and I need a little tolerance, so it has to to be no bigger than that. Now I can make it wider. So let's do it this way. Let's go and make it a tangent arc. Come on. Why won't you give me that line? There we go. So it can be a wide piece like that. Was that horizontal? I don't think 
that was. Come on, give me that. Thank you. I'm glad I caught that. I would have caught it with the prototype, but it's always, you know, better to catch it in the CAD. Um, I, am I releasing other ARC parts accessories with the holster launch, like the cone, etc.? Um, those are following soon after. I got my shipping notification. They arrive on the 21st. And I, I will be at least communicating all that in uh, either the launch video and on the website. And there's these are made on demand, so there's no like... These are going to be sold out in the first week or anything, so... If you want to wait for those accessories so you only pay shipping once, um, I would recommend doing that. Um, I just, the issue was that I wanted to get the, the Shapeways Compared Plastics in like five to seven days um, where the metal parts can take a lot, take another week or two longer. So I did, did those as two separate orders such that uh, obviously I could have this ready to go for the actual holster as soon as possible. Um, I could have had the comb in there, but for some reason, and I guess because it's uh, nylon 11, it must be going through some other different process uh, or a different f uh, factory or something like that. And we'll make this nice and beefy. So that'll act as stiffening them. In either case, I couldn't get the nylon 11 comb uh, along with these other plastic parts as fast. Um, I had to keep editing my order until I could get the shipping down to uh, a little bit faster so that uh, people aren't waiting as long. I, I know I want, I want, basically I want this out by Black Friday if, if, at the absolute latest. Okay, that works. That adds a stiffening rib. It's at least 0.3 millimeters clear of that. Let's see, let me turn the sharpness up one level so that doesn't look like it's a flat up here. And I might go in and tweak this a little bit just because it this angle looks wrong. Let's try. We did that with a round. Let's try with a chamfer and see if it looks any better. <laughs> For real, I'm get this one. Put my, I'm tempted to get this one and put my pocket clip back on. Uh, so I, I guess I didn't cover this earlier, um, but one of my annoyances, though, about the armored version, as as cool as it seems that you're covering the front of your tool, uh, you have to click, pull, click, then pull. Where my default holster is just grab the tool; it's in your hand. That ability to just grab it and already have it in your hand is incredible. And so I I know a lot of people are going to get hung up on, oh, I want to protect this. This is hardened tool steel with uh, phase deposition or, or, or uh, PVD coated uh, pieces. You People buy watches with this kind of finish on it. And uh, I wouldn't worry about smacking this into stuff. The this is my free P4. It's the same steel. It's been sitting on my naked holster for a long time, and you can see there are scratches on the screws. They mean they're not hardened as much as the uh, the actual scales. But I don't I I don't see any scratches on my scales. Maybe the dots hide a lot of it. But I will cover. I will be talking about that. That. You know, maybe you don't need the armored version. As cool as cool as it seems to protect your tool as much as possible, it's still a tool and it's also still really tough. We're gonna we can round this off after. I just want to see if a chamfer here looks better, and maybe just going through a thicker portion of this will look better. Too. Yeah, that definitely looks better. Let's 
second, I'm going to delete some rounds that I don't need here. Whoops, I want to delete new background geometry. Let me hide the 7-11-0 holder. Because I'm going to want to round this in a different way. It may not be nice to me here. Come on. Um, fine, we're going to do it in the cutaway then. This is why the undo command is, of course, so important. I just like to do the rounds in 3D afterwards because they, you know, they kind of affect the look of things. Come on, let's try two millimeters for him and him. Maybe more. Let's try three. All right. I do. I do admit, though, that there's a definite advantage to being able to keep the pocket clip on your tool. Um, I was using it all day today, and the holster's nice, is right on your hip. But sometimes it's really good to just like hang it right where you're where you're working or something like that. So yeah, there's definitely an advantage to being able to keep the pocket clip. There we go. That looks much better. And it kind of intersects with a pocket clip bends. So that will look good. Well, I'm going to print this tomorrow. This may become the default armored version. and But again, I do have all the geometry for the non-pocket clip armored version for those who want it. And maybe I'll have to offer this as two different variants. This little asymmetry right here is kind of killing me. And... Trying to figure out if I want to deal with it by switching this from a round to a slot or a slant, a slant that matches where the thumb tap cutout is. And I think that could look good because it'd be in line. I know I keep adding one more thing, right? One more thing. That's why straight the stream is going on. Uh, how long have I been streaming for? Long time. Uh, let me catch up with some chat while this is doing a, a save operation right now. This looks great even if you don't use Apocalypse. Oh yeah, good, thanks. Um, want the armored version to protect things from the tool instead of the other way around. Uh, help <laughs> keep it from scratching things you run up against them. That is true. Um, I have I have put scrapes on my wall and things while working, working on stuff uh, from it. So yeah, that is true. Uh, I took it off for the added thickness, but that solved, but this solved that. Uh, like TI, uh, you mean like the titanium wave? Oh, you're talking about the slant that I'm maybe going to be adding here in a second. All right, so let's do this. I think that will look really good. Let's copy the same angle that we have on the tool, and I might need to go back and activate the scales. We did this earlier in the very first version of the of the holster and it didn't look bad and now that it's asymmetrical I think it could actually look uh, look pretty good. Don't worry about the stream, more people joining over time. Yeah, people come and go. I'm sure there's plenty of people who are just going I'm, I'm being too monotonous or something like that. And I even do that. I'm, I'm guilty of that on Twitch, you know, joining somebody's stream and going, oh, there's only three people in here. <laughs> it's like, okay. I want it to be somewhat even there. So let's go two millimeters from there, six millimeters from there. Will that intersect nicely with the pocket clip? That was the, so I'll have to balance this. Oh, I got to come in a millimeter at least. Five millimeters is plenty of thickness. The question is, I think I'm gonna have to go closer to the thumb tab cutout. Five millimeters is enough structural thickness, but aesthetically, you want this to basically be as wide as this, or say three quarters as wide of it, and it's almost 7.83, so 
Oh, maybe 5.3. Maybe this will look good. We'll see. I can always move it after. One of the joys of the way Solid Edge works. Moving things is just moving things instead of going back and editing a sketch. And of course, I got to actually go and delete. So, a second, let's save this sketch off real quick. Not save it off, but just reserve it for a second. I of course need to cut away. Let's see if this will be, if the CAD's gonna be nice, just let me delete those straight up. Um, before that, I need to hide some things. And grab those faces. It may not because of the way this little merge happens here. See if your cat software can do that. Oh, I don't want that face. And then this side. Woo! They didn't even need to make a sketch to do that. It's always nice when it, it does behave. When it doesn't, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, titanium scratch is much easier than PVD. Oh, is that what I talk about? Oh, this is going to be on a curve. But this is going to be another uh, thing where Solid Edge will handle this nicely. I may need to get in. I need to delete these around. This These sets of rounds first. Such that there's a reference face for it to grab. Bear with me for a minute. Man, you're not going to be nice and delete those, are you? And deleted some of them. There we go. It's being nice. Effectively, I just want straight edges for the area that we're going to be working with, and then we'll just add the rounds back in afterwards. This will make it all just come together in the end easier. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to our sketch here. Bring in the sides. And we might as well bring in these. And turn regions back on. Grab these two chunks. Bring them up like this, and then we don't need the sketch anymore. And this is all the faces we don't need, and it will hopefully be nice and perfectly merge all this together. Cool. Let me catch us on the chat here. A company called Donk make pocket clips for the free series on Amazon. I had a couple. I'll have to look that up. Uh, did they? Are they the same? Like same design? Just co copies of the free series, or they actually make like some other custom ones? So I think we're gonna pull this down at least millimeter to look good and then we'll figure out what rounds to do in here so we would basically want to emulate the round of the pocket clip as and without coming up with a complete round so we'll save this real quick and we'll do all the inside rounds so well they're all inside rounds larger so it's gonna be that corner that corner that corner is that right yeah and we want this to kind of hug that pocket clip to look really good in a so two millimeter there then we'll see what these ones want to look like the sharper angle 
because if I just, you know, of course round that off, it's just back to a round. So these have a sharper angle. That'll look better. I think that looks better. Definitely. Even with the bottoms being round and the top being round. It's, it's copying the pocket clip and the thumb tab shapes, kind of echoing those things. So that will look good. And we'll come back and re-add all the round geometry that we took out earlier. Now if I knew what I was doing ahead of time, like I know every little step I was doing, of course rounds would come later in the process. This is, this is backtracking, but the fact that I can even do that is just simply amazing, where I can just take something, chop it up, bring it back together. All right, if we exit out, we can see what this looks like in Keyshot again. This time, let me bring back the bit extender, at least a few Leatherman bits and the 711L. Where's the rest of the bits that are this pattern? And I could bring in the Volte bit, but we'll just bring in the bit bit instead. There's one here. Oh, and, and we leave the bit extender. That looks pretty cool. If you pick the slim version, it'll look a little different because you know, these are breaking up the asymmetry, so this just looks like a utilitarian thing on your belt. Uh, but I think that looks really good in my mind. Custom clips that look cool, cooler than the Leatherman clip. So now I, want, now I need to look that up. So Amazon. Oh, cool. So they got a bunch of laser etch kind of clips. Titanium clips. It's funny. I bought a, um, I bought a clip... Or not a clip, I bought a, a pencil, like a nice, you know, expensive copper pencil to use at work. And I think I could just unpause that and update that file. And uh, it had a titanium pocket clip. And the funny part is, a, the titanium pocket clip was so stiff, you couldn't use it. You couldn't use it on a sheet of paper. Like, you couldn't hang the pencil on a sheet of paper. I had to sit there and take that pocket clip and take it to a grinder and grind it and hollow it and make it flexible enough that it became a pocket clip that I could use on my like pants and, and or a shirt or something. And I thought it was kind of funny because titanium sounds awesome for a pocket clip except for the fact that it's of course stiffer than steel. It can be more flexible if it's made in the right geometry. I don't think they made theirs in the right geometry. Alright, let's bring in a second here. Why is this? Oh, I'm in my downloads folder. Anodized black. I have a special texture for the bits that kind of is that chalky black that they have. We'll just bring in the texture we need for, whoops, that's the wrong one. For the ratchet driver. See it in blue, could see it in pink, red. But of course, 99% of people, ah, about 60% of people order black. Uh, let's see what the survey says. I did ask that question. 86.1% of people want black. <laughs> Not surprising considering the, the arc is black. I think that looks good. I don't think it's worth converting these rounds to something else because you still have this curve and that's kind of required so that when you pull that out you want a comfort stop for your finger to hit. This matches the etching on the arc or the, the silver finish. This might just work for the armored version. I'm pretty sure. I will have to go back, maybe tweak it for the barnacle bit version. I'm a barnacle bit holder. I think I might be able to get away with making a version of the barnacle bit holder that could fit it. Um, I know I keep doing one more thing. Let's look at the barnacle bit holder and see what 
how close are we? Uh, where is my barnacle beholder? There it is. Oh, I was, wasn't showing up in hidden view. Problem is, I yeah, I'd have to make the cutouts wider. There's really no way to make this much thinner. So it's already as small as it can be to fit the Leatherman screws. The Leatherman screws don't fit like this necessarily standard. Um, they, the countersink head isn't as wide as a regular um, 256 countersunk screw. They have it customized. I really like it to fit it, of course, so I can sell those and so people could actually have that option. Because uh, one of the reasons I'm not using the barnacle bit holder is because it protrudes from the surface of the tool. So, that might be something I'm going to have to do at another time, is play with that. I can either expand the cutouts uniformly in all directions, and it would still look good. And that might be what I have to end up doing. The, the catch is that, well, these actually aren't even. If I get into the holster... Because we did the blade on one side, the top edge, this top edge is actually wider than this bottom edge, or the mid, or the middle, I guess I should say. How wide is this? Because because maybe it actually would look better if we did that. One second, it's, it's kind of enabling editing. There we go. Seven point eight three versus six point or nope, get up to that edge. Ah, it's. Pretty close within a millimeter most people's eye won't see it I like it this way <laughs> yeah now let me catch up a little bit on chat it's been going by beautiful print <laughs> or print it we'll wait <laughs> uh, and it may end up being maybe uh, like I said I'll end up announce releasing this and if there's anything that has to kind of be pending I'll at least make sure that people are aware of it and that because uh, there's already people who be like, oh, your holster sold out because that's what the website says. No, that's just what Shopify says when you put in that something's not for sale yet. Uh, they just say sold out. I can't really do the pre-order due to the automated uh, ordering system. Um, so I already get people like, when are you going to make more? And nope, they're all going to be printed on demand, as many as you want. Uh, by the way, if you're in the U.S. Um, or actually basically anywhere in North America... Um, and some of the international shipments, your parts are made in either Michigan or New York. So these are made in USA items. And then the, um, uh, if they're, if you're ordering in like UK, Germany, um, Sweden, things like that, basically most of Europe, uh, they're made in the Netherlands. Uh, that's where Shapeways has their, has their facilities. That, that looks good even without the pocket clip. I mean, it's. And with a pocket clip, that looks really good. And it'll be functional. And most of the people who are going to want the armored holster are the people who want to have a lanyard and and have the tool docked but easily accessible while they're working on it. I think that's a really good option. I think we might be calling it here on that. I'll work on the barnacle bit holder and other stuff uh, and, and maybe tweak it, but it'll generally look like this. Uh, maybe match the lower rounds to more of a straight cutout of the Leatherman. Um, yeah, I'll try that off screen. Um, I need to go and get myself some dinner where we're t yeah, talking about cutting this to the same angle as that. That actually probably would look good because and still look good with this arc uh, down here because it's kind of tangent to that arc in that location. But we can leave this one curved because it echoes this top curve and it echoes the actual scale where this one doesn't echo the scale yeah i think we'll do that i'll add that to my notes but uh my stomach's growling i'm dro dropped by these did, did this after work and uh so i definitely got to get myself some dinner thanks for uh, joining me everybody um i'll be on for just a few minutes just replying to the any last second text chats just because of the lag uh, but uh thanks for joining me